Should you join Toastmasters? Well, let's talk about that today. This is Kit Pang, and if we have not met before, this channel is all about helping you improve your communication and public speaking skills. So, should you join Toastmasters? Uh, my experiences with Toastmasters is I've been in Toastmasters for around five years, been the president of one club for around two years, but I am no longer in Toastmasters. So in this video, I want to talk about the pros, the cons, and basically what I think about Toastmasters. And if you are looking to improve your public speaking, should you join a local Toastmaster club near you? So first, let's talk about the pros of Toastmasters. I started joining Toastmasters because I wanted to improve my public speaking. Toastmasters is one of the biggest organizations out there to help you and people like you improve your public speaking skills. So the first thing you have to know is that there's a Toastmaster club everywhere. It's like Zumba. There's a Toastmaster club everywhere. Down the block there might be two, there might be three. So if you, here's the thing though, if you can't find a Toastmaster club, they also have online clubs where you can go and practice. So basically, what I like about Toastmasters is that the format is the same every single time and that when you get there, there's always something for you to do. So they give you two manuals when you first join. One is the competent communicator and basically when you get this, there's basically uh, speech number one, the icebreaker, to speech number ten. You don't have to go in that order, but if you're looking for a roadmap, definitely Toastmasters has good in-depth information. But they also give you another book that's called Competent Leader. So what do you do when you are actually not speaking? So for example, you can be the evaluator, you can be the timer, you can be the ad counter. So you are always practicing your public speaking, your communication, and leadership leadership skills at all times. So again, uh, one good thing about Toastmasters is that you can practice any time. You don't have to be speaking in public to do it. And again, there's a lot of Toastmaster clubs around you, so you can find one almost everywhere that you go. Another good thing about Toastmasters is that they have competitions. So that means after you get so good at your club level, so every year they have uh, two chances where you can enter competitions. It could be a humorous talk, it could be a uh, uh, impromptu speaking or there's one major one where it's called the, the World Championships of Public Speaking where they have around 25,000 people and you can beat over 25,000 people and go for that first spot and this is something that's huge so they get all the Toastmaster clubs from around the world and so you have to go from the club level next to the area level the division level so if you are competitive and if you want to work on your public speaking this is one of the best ways to do it because it gives you that motivation, it gives you that drive. Another thing that's great about Toastmasters is the people. Almost every single Toastmaster club that I have attended, they make you feel welcome. Now, don't, don't quote me on this, but every single time I went to a Toastmaster club, most people will shake their hands and introduce themselves, and if it's your first time, they will introduce you to other people. Now, of course, there are clubs that has like 100 people each time. It might be a little bit harder, but most clubs are around, let's say, uh, 10 to 20 to 30 people, and most of them are pretty uh, welcoming because when they first went, they were probably nervous. They didn't know anyone else, so th that's how they felt when they got when they got in. Someone welcomed them, so they keep that tradition um, going. So it's very welcoming. Okay, let's talk about the cons of Toastmaster. With a Toastmaster club, and because it's everywhere, it depends on the people in the club. So for example, I know that this one speaker at Toastmaster Club, every single time he goes up and speak, he is the most boring, mundane, and uh, lifeless speaker out there. But he has been in Toastmaster for around 10 years now. But again, it depends on the people in the club. So for example, if everyone in the club is, okay, I'm going to clap because you did a good job, you did a bad job, I'm going to clap anyway, and they don't give you that necessary feedback, well, it depends on the people in your club. Maybe everyone in the club is new, right? But So you have to really find the vibe of the club, and you really have to see if you like the vibe of the club and the people in the club. And the other thing is, people sometimes, they join for three months, and then they quit. They join for six months, and then you never see them again. So there are always people going in, people going out. So for your improvement, it depends on people's feedback. And if people are, are not joining and they don't attend every single time, um, 
you never know who's there. So really, you have to find a club that is the right fit for you, but also find the right level too. Maybe some people that are new, maybe some people that are really, really good at those clubs. Maybe you're in the middle, find one of those clubs. But if everyone else, everyone else is new, no one knows what they're doing, right? They're learning along the way. So you always want someone who's try to see if they're really good so that you can ask them for feedback too. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that once you are done with the competent communicator or the competent leadership, there are advanced books that you can get and you can also join an advanced club. Usually people who are in the advanced club, they finished both of these books. So another con about uh, Toastmasters is that Sometimes it could be a little bit too formal and a little bit too structured. So if you're someone who don't like to follow a structure every single time, because every single time you go to a meeting, it's the same structure. There's always a Toastmaster. The Toastmaster will introduce the speaker. And then after the speakers, there will be table topics. After the table topics, there will be uh, evaluator. So this is good and bad. So if you like structure, this is good for you. But if you don't like it that formal, if you don't like it that strict, Toastmasters, again, can be very strict. For example, uh, in Toastmaster competitions, they always do like for the speaker to say, welcome audience, welcome Toastmaster. Thank you to, uh, so you, you say thank you to the audience, you say thank you to the Toastmaster, and you say thank you to uh, another person, the person who's hosting you for the day, for example. Sometimes they have certain ways of doing things in the Toastmaster way, but again, um, these are great things to know but sometimes if you don't want to be as formal or you don't want to be as strict, you might be getting practice your public speaking maybe somewhere else. But it's good to also go to Toastmasters to just, just to see it. So again, that's one of the cons is that they are very structured. But also this depends on the club as well. So the last con about um, Toastmasters, and this is why I think I stopped going to Toastmasters is, I said this earlier, People drop in and people drop out. Sometimes I've been to a few Toastmaster clubs I attended or have been a part of. Sometimes there are five people in a meeting. Sometimes there are three people. Sometimes there's a lot of people. You never know who's going to be there. And a lot of people at last minute, they drop out. So if there are two people and you're not ske scheduled to speak, what are you going to do for the whole hour? You might do table topics all day long. Or, for example, uh, there's I, I've been to a club, there's 50 people. You don't even get a chance to talk. So either it's too big of a crowd, too small of a crowd, and it's sometimes very hard to keep that mixture of the right amount of people. But if you do find those clubs, that's really, really good. But again, one of the cons in Toastmasters is that people, they just drop out a lot. So what do I think about Toastmasters? And at the end of the day, why did I'm not why am I not in Toastmasters anymore? I'm not in Toastmasters because I run an organization that teaches public speaking and communication skills and I am always actually speaking in public, whether I'm doing workshops, whether I am just uh, speaking on the keynote. So I've I am always taking my time to practice on my communication skills. And because Toastmasters is like a fitness class, sometimes I can't my personally make it at 12 o'clock every single time. So right? should you join Toastmasters? The answer is a yes, because the pros outweighs the cons uh, for me. And I definitely think that if you want to get your feet wet in public speaking, Toastmasters is very welcoming. Most of the clubs I attended, and it's a good chance for you to practice in front of a live audience. And that's what you want when you want to improve your public speaking. You need a live audience to practice with. And Toastmasters, they have all these uh, great books, competent communicator, competent leadership, and that you can just improve your skills no matter if you are just sitting down or if you're standing up speaking. So find a Toastmaster club near you. Just try it out. Even if you have been speaking for a while, it's a great way to give a 10-minute practice of your next uh, keynote, for example. Again, this is Kit Pang, the founder of Boston Speaks. If you like this video, let me know what, th what tips did you like about this video. Did you like some of the pros? Did you like some of the cons? Or what are you thinking? Are you thinking of joining a Toastmaster club right after? this, please subscribe to this channel too if you want to keep on improving your communication and public speaking skills.